Dixon from Eagle Lake Woodworking and welcome to the multi-part video series on how I constructed an arts and crafts style bed. It's inspired by a stickly panel bed and it has many of the characteristics I love about arts and crafts style furniture. It's made from quarter sawn white oak. It has through mortise and tenon joinery. The main construction of the headboard and the footboard is frame and panel construction. The first video in the series covers how to make the panels. Let me show you how they're made. What I have is a material that's approximately 3 16 of an inch thick with quarter sawn white oak veneer on one side. I'm going to double that up to get the quarter sawn white oak veneer on both sides and the end resulting panel will be approximately 3 8 of an inch thick. Now if you can't find this material, you could always veneer plywood or MDF on both sides to create your panels. What we're looking for is something that won't expand and contract with seasonal movement so that we can glue these panels in place and it'll help with the overall rigidity and strength of the bed frame. There's 12 panels in all which means I need 24 of these pieces to glue back to back to make the 12 panels. The finished size of the panel is 8 and a quarter inches by 15 and 5 eighths. So I'm going to cut them slightly oversized to give me a little bit of allowance uh, during the glue up and I can trim them to final size later on. This is a pretty straightforward lamination to make these panels. I've put a board down on the workbench, I've elevated it off. So after we get the pieces glued up, I can get some clamps all around both edges of these boards. So the sequence is I'm going to put the first board on, cover this with yellow glue, put the second board on top of that, and then proceed until I have all my sandwiches all together in this lamination, and then I'll put another board on top and clamp it all up. I like to use one of these plastic scrapers to spread the yellow glue, so I uh, put a lot on and then I use these scrapers to spread it out in an even layer. And I find that putting enough on one piece, I only put glue on one side of the glue up. Okay, with an even layer there, I can put on the second piece. I like to line up one edge of both boards so that I have a reference after they're glued up to cut them on the table saw. And then to keep them from sliding around during the glue up, I use an upholstery stapler and put a staple in each end. So I'm going to proceed with the rest of the boards in this same manner and when I have them all glued, I'm going to clamp it all together. You can tell you're getting good even clamping pressure when all the way along the glue starts to squeeze out that seam. That's a good sign. We've got enough glue in there and we've got good clamping pressure. If you have the clamps, use them. The more clamps, the better. Now that I have the panel material glued up, it's time to rip it to its final dimension. Now if you recall, I made one side flush the best I could. But still, even some glue squeezed out on that side, so it's not a perfect edge. So I'm going to make two rips. I'll use that reference side against the fence first, cut the panel a little bit oversized, and then I'll turn it around and have that fresh rip against the fence and cut the panel to its final dimension. The finished width of the panel is eight and a quarter inches. I'm going to cut the panels to their finished length using the cross cut slot on the table saw. It's a two cut process. First, I'll make a square cut towards the end and then I'll slide it down against the stop block and it'll give me my finished panel at 15 and 5 8 inches. 
Using the stop block, the panels are sure to come out at the exact same length. Well, that does it for this part of the video, but I invite you to check out the all new Eagle Lake Woodworking. See the rest of the videos in this series and videos on other woodworking topics.